Why, hello there YouTube and welcome to a Who review. I am Davros and I am a Whovian and today I review Doctor Who, The Sound of Drums and Last of the Time Lords. <laughs> So, carrying on from the previous episode, Utopia, the Doctor, Martha and Captain Jack managed to get back to the present day by the Doctor quickly fixing Jack's vortex manipulator and then when they arrive in the present they find it's election day and that Harold Saxon has won the votes and is now the Prime Minister of Britain and of course we all know that Mr Saxon is basically an anagram of Master Number 6 as he is the 6th actor at least the six actors on screen to play the master, as I can gather, but we've had Peter Pratt and Jeffrey Beavers, which I think were meant to be the same master and stuff. Anyways, yes, you know, the Doctor finds that Saxon has sinister plans ahead. He introduces the race to a creature called the Toclophane, which the Doctor has said is just another word for the bogeyman. And of course, you know, his empire ra rises beyond the stars and uses turns the TARDIS into a vortex, you know, into a paradox machine and also discovers that he's been there for 18 months and has been hijacking and controlling everything and also used the Archangel Network as a way to block out his presence so the Doctor couldn't sense him because Time Lords couldn't feel that but yeah, the Master takes control of everything and also units and goes onto the Valyard where he then takes over the Earth and uses the Paradox Machine to get the Toclophane because the Doctor rigs the TARDIS so it takes him to the end of the universe and the next place he ends up which is the 21st century and also um, you know, the Doctor is then his prisoner as he's, for as he's forced to age due to the Master's laser screwdriver containing some technology of Lazarus's youth machine that put puts it in reverse and makes the Doctor old. Also, uh, you know, in the second part, the Doctor tasks Martha by going off around the world to tell her stories of the Doctor and gather this weapon that could permanently kill the Master and, of course, you know, the master catches her and then she you know, she gets help from other people like Dr. Milligan played by Tom Ellis and another woman and then after that the master captures Martha and then it turns out she was never going to kill the master and everyone using their thoughts of the doctor cheering for him use that to reverse the age on the doctor because the master then ages him to 900 years old trying to force him to regenerate and then you know the doctor stops the master they fix time the toclophane get trapped at the end of the universe and the toclophane when they find out what that is it turns out it is the refugees from utopia that have been converted into these and the master's been doing that going back and forth with the tardis doing all that and then of course you know they reverse the year that never was and then the master attempts to escape but then gets killed by his wife Lucy and because he has a wife as well and then the doctor begs him to regenerate but he doesn't and then he dies in the doctor's arms and the doctor burns his body Captain Jack bids farewell to Martha then reveals to them that he used that they used to call him the face of Bo back at home and the Doctor and Martha are mind blown by it. Also, the Martha declines her invitation to go with the Doctor as she feels she needs to be with her family as they remember the year that was, never was. Then of course the Doctor sets off again only to find the TARDIS has crashed into what he first thinks is the ship, the Titanic, which takes us into the 2007 Christmas special. So that's the story there. What did I like about this one? Well, um, first of all, I thought this was a great two-part finale, the way we got to see the Master fully return and John Sim. You know, this episode kind of belonging to him with his evil Master intentions. And I've got to say, the Master was a bit of a bonkers lunatic in this you know the way he 
was insane and the sound of drums in his head, the toclophane and everything, how he managed to rig his way into government power and take over and everything. You know, just an evil, masterous villain and that he'd been there the whole time lurking among the Doctor. And I think that's clever writing from Russell there. Russell T Davis did a good job on the writing. And then how it continued into part two, how he was still twisted and evil. He had that dance number with Scissor Sisters. Can't decide when wheeling the doc an elderly doctor around the whole place. And, um, yeah, how he ruled the world. So for a long, for a while, he actually won and ruled the world for a year. Until they undid it all and everyone in the Valiard could remember how everything was. Um, also, the Toclophane. They may look gentle and nice, but they were evil and feral. Well, not feral, but evil and under the Master's control. And the shock that at the end of the universe there is no hope, and that's what happened to the refugees. They, the Master converted them into the Toclothane, as one of them explains it to Martha, and it turns out it was the girl that told Martha the skies are like diamonds. Yeah, very unnerving. And the fact that they're probably still there now at the end of the universe in the far far future the what year 100 trillion um i even like that moment in the sound of drums where the doctor reminisces about gallifrey and we actually get to see gallifrey in a flashback for the first time in the modern era with the orange sky the citadel some time lords the master as a child and everything that is just stunning visual effects right there and i really liked that it had good visual effects on that part and yeah it was a beautiful scene that um and then i feel part two you know, well part three technically uh, belonged to martha you know she was you know the savior she rescued the world single-handedly by traveling around telling her story of the doctor and using the power of thought from everyone around the world to hack into the archangel network um and I thought Freema Adjuman, you know, she was, well, she proved herself a badass and saved the world. We also had, uh, you know, Tom Ellis as well featuring this, you know, before, long before his days as Lucifer Morningstar in the series Lucifer on Amazon and Netflix. Um, and as well, David Tennant. I feel David Tennant and John Barrowman in the finale took a bit of a backseat, you know, they like waited out Martha's plan or the plan the doctor set out for Martha also good aging makeup effects on the doctor making him look really old about 100 years older and then all the way to a tiny little shriveled man when the doctor ages him to 900 well of course he doesn't give in and regenerates but gets little and stuff but then even then the doctor manages to use the archangel network to reverse what the master had done and after all that destruction, the Doctor forgave him. And then, of course, that moment where the Master dies at the hand of his companion wife, who he seemed to abuse uh, you know, in the long run. He was, you know, it was, I felt it was a bit of a shame that the Master had to die. I, I really didn't want the Master to go either. <coughs> Excuse me, but um, he ended, he did, and... Yeah, but then there was that ring that was found by his burial, and I thought, oh, could him and his wife orchestrated something here? We were left wondering for two years, but eventually Russell did pick up on that again. He actually left that open in case anyone else wanted to pick it up, but I guess he ended up picking up on it, and like I say, it would take two years, but we'd find out what happens next in the end of time in Tenant's final outing as the Tenth Doctor at least. Um, so, yeah, and then there's that moment where Captain Jack said that, you know, gave us a quick talk about his, you know, his place at home, the Bofane Manibula, and how he was the first ever to be signed on for the Time Agency, and then he dropped that bombshell to the Doctor, because even though he can't die, he then reveals he does slowly begin to age, like he found a grey hair. And then wonders what he'd look like if he lived for a million years. But we already kind of know what he'd be like if he lived five billion years. Because he reveals to the Doctor that he is... That they call him the face of Bo. 
and even like the Doctor and Martha, I was stunned as well. A lot of us probably were. Now I remember watching that in 2007. I had Sky Plus, not Sky Plus HD. This was before that. I remember having Sky Plus, and I remember rewinding that bit to make sure I heard that right. And yeah, how he becomes a face of Bo, yet yeah, that loose end has not been tied. It might get tied. I don't know. Um, but yeah, how he becomes a face of Bo. Maybe we'll find out one day. I don't know. But uh, yeah. Um, I thought John Barrowman was entertaining and great to see him back. But then, of course, he goes off, you know, to rejoin Torchwood. Uh, and, uh, you know, Martha bids farewell to the Doctor. So, yeah, this was a good, you know, finale for Series 3. And, you know, great to see the Master back. Because Series 1, they thought, let's bring back the Daleks. Series 2, the Cybermen. Series 3, the Master. So yeah, Doctor Who, The Sound of Drums, The Last of the Time Lords. What am I going to rate these performances? They get a 10. Writing, again, I give it a 10. The visuals are 9. My personal, I give it a 9. I do, in, I do enjoy this finale and it is a great one. So yeah, there you go. There is my review for that one. Have you seen it? Let me know what you think down below in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Share with your friends and feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell. I'm Davros and I'm a Whovian and this has been a Who Review so until next time, run for your life.